This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> So in case you've ever wondered some of the specifics about gear that I use and all of that stuff, this is kind of the, the boring kind of studio tour and talking through bits and pieces that I use. So one of the questions I get asked a fair amount is what straps do I use? So I use Franklin straps and specifically I think this is the hemp, um, it's the thicker one, I think maybe three inches. And what I really like about it is leather on that side, hemp on the other side but it sits nice and wide on your shoulder. So whether you're playing a Les Paul or whatever, it's not too bad. Um, you don't get that aching feeling. Super comfy straps. And they were the first company to really ever send me anything, and, you know, thank me for doing videos with their stuff. And so I will probably never use another strap, but Franklin, um, yeah, really, really nice straps, really well made, made in the US and super, super comfy. I guess one of the other questions that I get asked quite a bit about is what strings do I use? And generally I tend to use the Dario's, um, just the bog standard strings. I don't have particularly acidic sweat or anything and I'm playing the guitars, all of them, often enough that they don't really get rusty. So that's kind of a, a good thing for me, I guess. I use 10s mostly. I've also got a pack of 11s, um, 10s or 11s. And then on the jazz guitar, I use some sort of flat winds. I still haven't changed the strings on it. Don't really know what they are. Um, and pick wise, I used to use Hawk picks who make, you know, like a version of Red Bear. Um, but I had an incident where I lost one in the petrol station and um, it was a whole thing. And I had to go back with a pair of massive tweezers in the night and pick it out of a drain. Um, to avoid that happening again, I use a much less extravagant Daddario Black Ice 1.5 millimeter. This is sort of Jazz 3-esque, um, but it's got a really nice kind of powdered finish. Um, perfect shape for me, perfect pick for me, and sounds really good as well. So that's a happy situation where Daddario make relatively cheap picks that work perfectly well for me. And I use that for everything. Um, it's sort of a happy medium where it's got that really nice kind of feel for kind of jazz hybrid picking and stuff and doesn't have a super uh, chirpy attack or anything uh, if you're nerdy on picks. I would recommend those to try 
picks are a super personal thing, but those are what I use. In terms of the rest of the, the kind of studio, I'll, I'll show you some of this, but the monitors that I use are JBL LSR 305s, relatively cheap speakers. Um, the room is not treated or anything like that. It's just basically a bedroom. I think you could probably tell that. Um, for me, what's more important is just to enjoy kind of playing guitar in here than have, you know, the most perfect looking video or the most perfect audio. And even if I try to make videos look really good, generally it doesn't work. So um, you get what you get with me, I'm afraid. So that one will be where a kid goes. ES165 there. That's kind of the amps and overspill amps here because I've had to make some demos for Boss. Um, some guitars go there, so this is what I mean. Like this is not particularly for those that are super organized. I have to keep boxes for everything, so maybe I could make this feel better for myself if I did something like that. So at least the top of it is covered. I don't know, does that help? Um, but yeah, amps over here, which very rarely get used and are probably even less rare in the future. That was a Christmas present for me and Karen. Um, that's kind of the main kind of guitar spot over here and then a little bit of overspill behind and the very messy rack where I keep pedals and modelers and stuff and then here's the main sort of hub of everything with a desk that is very old it's probably time to replace that um, people ask which monitors I use JBL LSR 305s and I use Reaper as the uh, thingy of choice um, my view most of the time it's something like that right I have the tripods in place at all times because I like the idea of just being able to as quickly as possible get into making music that's my usual view and I have this glass plinth where you can put pedals when I'm demoing things up close uh, also a secondary light there and sometimes that light up there I use but not all the time um, so that's kind of <laughs> the the tour as as fun as it is and as glorious. Oh, also I'm using the Steinberg URRT4 as you can see there and then I use this Nuax thing for the mic and yeah I'm plugged into that at all times whatever model I'm using via uh, XLR to jack uh, I find it easier to have like a constant hub rather than you using the USB interfaces of individual modelers. Obviously, I'd be switching things out quite a lot if that was the case. I sometimes like to keep an empty of something around so that I can focus a video accurately, like so. Then I know that my focus point is in the right place. But yeah, that's the, the main tripod that I use most of the time. And then I have a tripod here for close-up stuff. Important, I think, to have things kind of at arm's reach most of the time. You know, leads that are important to me are up here and camera here. And then I've got, you know, my main kind of guitar seat, which never moves. And then this is the main workstation once I've done my the fun part. I then have to do the boring part, which is editing, etc. Yeah, Steinberg URRT4 audio interface. The computer that I use is actually fairly decent spec. I'll flash some of them up. Um, Lenny's dad helped me spec that one out uh, maybe two years ago now, but that machine works really, really nicely. Um, of course, for this sort of stuff, it's important to have a lot of hard drive space because obviously I'm making a lot of videos and playing a lot of guitar. So it's quite a lot of files and stuff on that computer. So I did get another hard drive the other day um, to kind of take off some of the burden there. And again, one of the things that I'll keep saying is that if you're... I think maybe this works for practice as well. I like to have as few blockages as possible between me actually having an idea for something and being able to do it. So that's why I tend to leave something out most of the time. So the tripods are always in place. Um, the cameras are pretty much always on charge unless they're being used. Uh, I don't leave the computer on all day because that's just a waste of energy, but it boots up pretty quickly. Um, and yeah, my audio interface is always plugged in and I just have two leads depending on what unit I'm using. So the HX stomp most of the time is just down on the floor 
Um, and so it's just a case of turning the computer on, um, setting up a project track and a click, um, setting the camera recording, and then getting to work in that way. Getting the lights in a position where I could film at any time of day as well has been important. Um, so even if it's night time, I can turn on this main big light up here. Um, and then I've got some close-up lights, lights coming from both sides. Um, at about three to four o'clock at the moment, quite a lot of light comes through that window, but sometimes that enables me to get some of these kind of cool golden hour shots, which I really like the look of. Um, aside from that, it's generally pretty easy to film all day round in here. Oh, one of the difficulties of kind of doing this gear stuff for... Uh, as a main interest is that I have to buy stuff off of eBay or whatever or off of the manufacturers themselves. Uh, obviously not all of this gear is to be kept forever so I do tend to keep a lot of boxes so finding places for boxes to live can be a bit of a, a problem. Um, it's just one of those kind of hazards of the occupation I guess. Um, Generally, I'm not really a clean freak. I wanted to make this video specifically so that I would tidy up a bit so it wasn't super embarrassing. But I find that it really does help to clean up your space every now and then. So I try to hoover in here once a week, sort of dust some of the bits. Tidy up, uh, it does help, you know, to have a bit of a clearer headspace if you're able to, to make the space where you're creating a little bit clearer. I think... This may make things a little bit more difficult in the future, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but that's basically my space and how it looks in here. Uh, there's also a couple of videos on workflow if you want to see how I actually put together my introductions. Um, so I'll suggest, you know, trying to watch them if you can bear to do it. Um, but this was just, you know, taking a look at the studio. The cameras that I use, uh, this one that you're viewing this on is a, a Sony... Lumix DMC something, I'll flash up what it is, relatively cheap, it just has a nice 50mm equivalent lens on there, 25mm I think it is, but it's a different type, and the other one is a Sony A7R2, um, which is a bit more of an expensive camera with a Sigma lens on it, 50mm lens I think, but that one I find a bit more difficult to actually use, I use that for the super close-ups of like pedals and stuff, um, but you're mostly, the, the, the shots that I prefer are the ones that you see on this camera, which is a relatively inexpensive camera as it happens. Um, but yeah, once you've learned to, to get these things in focus, which I'm gradually getting there, um, this one looks pretty good, I think. I hope that's been vaguely interesting. As I say, I did want to tidy up the room, so this video was the the impetus to actually get the room slightly tidy feel free to like and subscribe if you've got any questions about the setup or anything like that feel free to leave them in the comments and i'll try and get to those um and yeah the intro i was using eric lead 35 the outro i was also using that um i'll catch you in another video soon have a good weekend cheers